everybody, this is Melissa Bumstead at Parents vs. SSFL or Parents Against SSFL, Santa Susana Field Lab. Um, I've got a few updates for you all. I, things, things have just been, things are still happening. I mean, the fire is still burning, obviously, although the, the firefighters have just done a tremendous job of getting uh, quite a bit of containment on it. So everything that I'm, I feel really behind, but that's because things are changing every day, even for us. Okay, so if you haven't, I'm going to put a link down at the bottom. Jerry Brown just went on television, and it's an unbelievable. He said that the Woolsey Fire at the Santa Susana Field Lab should be a wake-up call to everyone that it's time to get that site finally cleaned up. And he also said that he does not find any assurance and the statements that the Department of Toxic Substance Control, that's DTSC, Department of Toxic Substance Control, <clears throat> he doesn't find any assurances in their statements saying that there's no chance of contamination and the smoke and the ash caused from the Woolsey Fire starting at the Santa Susana Field Lab. Well, that's, that's a, a huge statement to make coming from our governor. Um, it's a little bit ironic because he appointed a lot of the top officials at the DTSC. Those are uh, appointed positions by the governor, which is why we've been reaching out to Gavin Newsom so much. Uh, Barbara Lee is the director of the DTSC right now. She's already been hinting she wants to come back next year when Gavin is in office. That cannot happen. Barbara Lee has got to go. In fact, probably all of the head leadership has got to go. And, and some people should be looking into Cal EPA while they're at it. I wouldn't even be surprised as once the full severity of what has been done to our community for years, not just through the Woolsey fire, I wouldn't be surprised if Boeing started to have top offices resignate because they're, they're pretty much the, they're the puppet master and DTSC has been the puppet for quite a while, but Barbara's got to go. Barbara Lee, not going to happen. So a lot of people are asking why we should trust us, you know, the Physicians for Social Responsibility, uh, Committee to Bridge the Gap, um, grassroots groups like ourselves. Why should we trust them and not the DTSC when they're a government agency? So I'm not going to go into the long story. If you guys are interested, you can comment below that you would like to have a bigger history of why the DTSC has been so harmful for the things that they've done to our community with the Santa Susana Field Lab um, ever since 2010, which... Barbara Lee was a big part of making sure that didn't happen. Um, but I'm, I'm just, right now, I'm just going to try to make this quick. You know me, I'm a talker. Um, about the Woolsey Fire specifically. So I'll have links to all of these down below. So is this backwards? It's probably backwards. And I can't really do anything about that right now. You'll see, I'll put them in order. This is the community update from November 9th, 1.30 a.m which seems like a pretty random time to put out a press release. 1.30 a.m. This is less than 10 hours after the fire had started. And you guys probably know it's a quick moving fire. There was a lot going on. There, right off the bat, they say that the fire agencies responding to the fire have consulted with their own hazardous material coordinator who's familiar with the site and determined the fire did not present any risks other than those normally present in a wildfire situation. So that was put out the next day. And thankfully, uh, we read that. So I was just curious because the DTSC has blatantly lied to the public before. Well, what hazmat team did they work with? So I spent the entire day calling all the hazmat in Ventura County and LA County. So narrowed it down. We got it to station 50 over in Ventura County. Um, the the uh, uh, head of the hazmat over there was kind enough to reply to my text message, even though he was literally on the front lines of the fire that day. And he said, um, when I spoke to the office over at station 50, I actually talked to a couple different, um, couple different firefighters who were there, part of the hazmat team and asked them, did you work with the DTSC? Did you evaluate the Santa Susana field lab for any kind of dangers there? And they said, what is the Santa Susana field lab? And I, I filled them in, and one of them scribbling notes at the same time. He said, I need to look into this. This is this could be dangerous. They had no idea that that site had potential dangers. And then when I talked to their captain, he said, no, definitively, they had not worked with the DTSC. And then I got a hold of a captain over on LAFD, 
And I also asked him, your hazmat team, I'm trying to get a hold of them. We want to see if they did any of the samples at the Santa Susana Field Lab, just like this community update says. He said, no, they don't do that. They don't do radiation testing. They always default to either Cal EPA or the um, quality manage QAMD, Quality Air Management District. He said, no, definitively, LA Hazmat did not work with these DTSE. So this right here, this is a this is a blatant lie because they're trying to cover up the fact that since 2010, when those agreements were signed, they have done nothing but drag their feet and make it difficult to get any kind of beneficial cleanup. They've done some terrible things in the name of a cleanup, like sending 3,000 tons of uh, low-level radiation contaminated asphalt right next to the plutonium reactor that Boeing owned to Simi Valley recyclers and not warning those workers that as they were recycling that construction material, that they were possibly being, more than likely, being exposed to plutonium, the most dangerous substance on Earth. It has a 22,000-year half-life. And that material is somewhere in L.A. County right now, in someone's sidewalk, in someone's school, that, that radioactive 22,000-year half-life of plutonium is somewhere. We have no idea because the DTSC let that happen. And they know they, that they let that happen because Committee to Bridge the Gap sued them to stop. And recently, I believe he lost that lawsuit because, you know, Boeing lawyers have a lot of money they put into it. Okay, here's the next media release. November 13th. I'm sorry if that's backwards for you. Um, I'm going to have the link to this one down below. Uh, as of November, oh, for immediate release on the 13th, but they wrote it about the 12th. And it says, our hearts go out to the fire, wah, wah. Um, not wah, wah, to the people, wah, wah, to DTSC, because obviously they didn't mean it. So not my, my family was evacuated. Thankfully, we didn't um, lose any lives or homes. So that just so you know, that was directed to the DTSC because they're not, they don't care about us. Um, the results from this initial round of testing. So they put out another statement, very closely wording the first statement they put out. The results from this initial round of testing showed no radiation levels above background levels and no elevated levels of hazardous com compounds other than those normally present in a wildfire. This is really interesting, and you can look at it again when, when you get the, the comments down below. Um, you'll notice that all of a sudden the hazmat teams aren't mentioned anymore. Isn't that interesting? Look, that's the predominant agency they list here on that first one. And now they're gone because we sent out a press release to every single news station. And I'm pretty sure they got a hold of that and realized, oh, shoot, I guess we shouldn't have said that lie because they're on to us. So they took that out. Now they're, they're not listing any agencies in this second update, but they're still saying it's safe because even though this first letter, I forgot to read this to you guys. Okay, so this is the first update, right? A few hours, 10 hours after the fire has started. Um, oh, this is this is beautiful. So here they say it's safe. The fire did not present any risk other than those normally present. This is their first release. And they blatantly lied about the fire agency's hazmats being part of this situation. Then they say there is an air monitoring network around the perimeter of the Santa Susana Field Lab. As soon as access is open, we will evaluate the site, the air monitoring stations, and available data. So they even say in their own letter, they have not researched the data, yet they made a blanket statement saying that there was no problem at all. I mean, that's absurd. I, I told a reporter that over the phone, and he was gasping on the phone. He said, that's not possible. They would actually write that in their own letter. It, it's right there. You'll see it at the bottom. They did not have access to their own data, but they were already putting out statements declaring it safe. On their second one, same similar statement, except for the agencies are all of a sudden disappeared. Then uh, the public city of public health on the 13th issued their own their own thing. Um, it says it's it's pretty much the same exact wording as the DTSC used. Very very similar. Uh, there were no discernible levels of radiation in the tested area, which that that in itself is a statement. Well, what tested area? The site's over 2,000 acres. It's huge. And we already know there's a whole buffer area. It doesn't have any radiation. We know that. It's, it's really clean. It's a great little spot. It's a little swatch. So where did they test? They don't say. Did they test in area one right next to the sodium reactor experiment that burned down, which was only a couple, 
maybe a thousand feet from where this fire started? Is that where they tested? Did they find all that uh, radioactive sodium that was just disposed directly into the ground? Did they go to area four that we think burned? That has all the hazardous material waste management buildings. Is that where they tested or well, we don't know. They just tested. They tested. We should trust them. No discernible radiation in a tested area, even though when the EPA did their report and they went to the areas where they knew the contamination was, they had off the chart radiation. I mean, it's like getting a, a CAT scan when you stand that close. It's actually literally the same amount of radiation. So this tested area makes me think, uh, buffer zone. It's the buffer zone, if they even tested it all. So they discussed, the public health has discussed it with the California Department of Toxic Substances. So... The public health finding is directly based off these guys immediately because hypothetically that's the way it should work if you had not a corrupt agency. Um, oh, oh, and this is golden. This is golden. Okay, I keep holding it up. I know it's probably backwards. I just want to show you that it is highlighted. It is there. Again, I've got a link for you guys. They're listing out now all the agencies that have gone through and tested for the radiation um, which, by the way, we don't need it to know the radiation on the ground. We need to know the radiation in the air and the smoke. By now, this is November 13th. The fire started on what? The 8th, right? Yeah, the 8th. The smoke's already passed. Why are they still here testing? Shouldn't they be out in Oak Park and Agora and Thousand Oaks and Malibu and West Hills? All those places where the smoke blew through. The smoke was so thick in my house here. Um, I'm about five miles from the site. It was so thick the first night of the fire, that it woke my husband and I up. We couldn't breathe, and we had to put wet towels underneath all the doors, and we put tape over all the windows, and we, we covered all the filters, and then we ran our air filters like crazy because that's how thick the smoke was. But they're not testing out here. They're still at the site, and apparently they're just testing the ground for radiation, which is useless, and they know that, but they know that this statement sounds very authoritative, and they're assuming the public won't uh, dig into it. And here they're listing all these, um, the DTSC was part of their public statement informing them, multiple agencies, we don't know who, um, the Ninth Civil Support Team, and, oh, look at this, the Department of Energy's Radiological Assistance Program. They are the co-owners of the site. They have a huge, huge conflict of interest. They have so much invested in that property that if the truth were to come out, how radically dangerous their property is, that they have been fighting to not clean, that they have every intention with the last ERR that was sent out uh, to leave up to 98% of that contamination on site permanently. And yet here they are, the trusted source of, of doing some of that radiation testing on that area that they haven't disclosed. So if this isn't a big red flag, like Jerry Brown said, he has no assurances in the DTSC or the public health, well, there's, there's reason. I mean, it's right here. You just it's a simple paper trail. This is the latest community update from the DTSC directly. You see it's all highlighted up. November 14th, same exact wording that there's nothing there to worry about. We're all so healthy and so overreacting. The DTSC is working with a multiple agency response team, including Cal EPA, Environmental Health Hazard Assessment, California Department of Public Health, which, of course, they were informed by them, but now they're using them to inform them, so that's just a big loop. Um, United States Environmental Protection Emergency Response, United States Department of Energy Rapid Assessment Unit, uh, Civil Support Team from the National Guard, and Counties of Los Angeles and Ventura. Now, the fact that they are working with these agencies, just so you know, that doesn't mean these agencies are informing the DTS of the radiation. That just means that they're all on site doing different jobs. Um, and you'll notice that the L.A. Hazmat and Ventura Hazmat, they haven't ever come back into any of these letters. They're just, they, they wanted us to forget that that was the first reference that they said definitively found the radiation that they made that first decision off of. And those agencies aren't listed anymore. That's significant. I mean, it's significant. This is, these are the type of agencies where they know everything they say can be used against them in a court of law. So for them to, to they didn't accidentally forget to include these guys. This is, this is a blatantly, they have left out their first resource that they um, did. And i got to finish this up because I have an important call in three minutes. Um, so again, they're saying again, based on all the results and measurements and analysis, they indicate no radiation or hazardous material released from the fire and the smoke 
and the public has no risks other than what is normally posed by wildfires and wild smoke. And then this beautiful little sentence down at the end. I guess they thought nobody would be able to read a whole page of text. You know, they thought we were done. Laboratory analysis requires several days to complete. They wrote it. It's very similar to all these other statements that say once we're able to access our results, we'll, we'll, we'll back up what we already said. Just like this one when they said that they had test results and they hadn't even worked with hazmat. Now they're saying that they will need several more days to complete this analysis. And yet, they're already, again, still saying that the site has no risk to the public. Uh, it's no wonder that Jerry Brown doesn't trust them. Nobody should trust them. This agency is completely corrupt. They, um, we have emails, again, I can go into a longer story, showing that Boeing and their lawyers working together to, to make the site... They, I mean, Boeing just wants to save money. That's all they really care about. And I don't really understand how, but the DTSC just gives them everything they want. Every time the advocates have come up and asked for some safety measure or something to be done in order to safeguard the people, they, they won't do it. They give Boeing what they want every single time. Every single time. And, um, and it just really reminds me, quick, 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 sorry. The first time I ever went to a DTSC meeting... It was the first time I'd really ever heard of the Santa Susana Field Lab. My daughter was still uh, finishing treatment the first time in 2015, this was. My friend um, had just lost her baby, her two-year-old, to cancer. She had just, we had just been to her funeral a few months before. Uh, I had another, I mean, there was like seven of us, okay? And we're all really traumatized moms trying to find out if there is a link between our children's cancer and the Santa Susana Field Lab. They had a three-hour presentation to the public, the DTSC, and, and it was up here in West Hills a three-hour presentation, and they had charts, they had graphs, they were showing how much contamination was where, you know, and I was like, oh, great, this is really helpful, we're fine. We don't even have to worry about anything. They've got it all figured out. They clearly, there's no problem. At the very end of the presentation, I'm not making this up, they said all the numbers that they showed were hypothetical. So I went up afterwards and I said, um, excuse me, why, why did you use hypothetical numbers? Have you not done the research? And they said, oh, yes, we have. And I said, well, where, where is it? We, we want to know. I want to know if my kids are safe. And the, the, he gave me such a patronizing look and said, oh, honey, this is very, I don't think he said, honey, that's my word. He said, this is, this is very technical. It's online. I don't think you could read it. Very difficult. Just leave it to us scientists. We know what we're doing. That's, that, that was my first introduction to the DTSC. Don't worry about it. They know what they're doing. They're going to give smoke screens and hypothetical numbers. They're going to admit that they don't have the results of their own analysis, their own lab. They're not testing in Oak Park. They're still on the site. They're not following where the smoke went. They had nothing set up in place, even though that's, ah, uh, I mean, that area burns. It's, it, it's, all, it's all brush. It's all dry grass and trees. I mean, it's prime fire zone. And they had nothing in place to capture any kind of, of the, the smoke to immediately have detection, to immediately find out if we were in danger of release c contamination, to immediately issue public statements that could have just said, please try not to breathe extra air while we examine, well, not extra air, but you know what I mean, like, don't go outside, don't play in it. We put out that, the Parents versus SSFL, we put out the warnings that said, wash your hands so you don't accidentally eat some contamination, take off your shoes so you're not tracking it inside. They just said, don't worry about it, leave it to us scientists. So I have got to go. I hope that helps you guys understand. I hope you're as angry as I am. Uh, we're tweeting to Newsom, or you can go on his Facebook page. We want Newsom to, one, not hire Barbara Lee, but really what we want is independent testing. And we want the DTSC to show us exactly where they tested. We want to make sure it's not in that buffer zone, but it was on area one where the fire broke out. And two, we want to know what equipment did they use because they have used old equipment. In fact, real quick, on the last time that they were trying to take, you know how Boeing sent all that contaminated asphalt out to the workers? Well, then the DOE wanted to do it, the Department of Toxic Substances. They said, oh, that sounds fun. We want to tear down our stuff and send it out to the public. And um, we found out that the DTSC proposed that they were allowed to use 1974 standards to determine what was radioactive and what had to be shipped out. 1974 standards. It was a thousand times less protective than modern EPA units. 
uh, not units, but safety measures. A thousand times less protective. And the DTSC was proposing this, and the advocates had to fight against the DTSC, the government agency that was meant to protect us. They have a long, long, long pattern of just a horrible history. And they did it in Vernon. They've done it up at Kittridge. And you just start Googling DTSC and what people are mad about. They are hurting our community. They should have been prepared. They were not. They should have warned us. They did not. They keep trying to cover their own mistakes instead of turning around and apologizing to the public and getting to their jobs and doing the right thing. We want to make sure that we get all the right numbers to make sure they're, they're not washing the foliage first, which they have done. Okay, I'm getting text messages. Okay, we really have to... Oh, they're changing it to 2.30. Thank goodness. I love those guys. We're working with a lot of news agencies right now. We're working with um, the Kardashians. If you haven't seen, they're tweeting our stuff, which is amazing. Um, so I'm, I'm going to wrap this up, but you know, help spread the word. Send, s let other people read these. You know, share around so people can read the, the community updates themselves. It's very, very, very first grade level to realize that they're lying to us. And, and it has to stop. And we need our kids to be safe. We need the 100% cleanup of the Santa Susana field app. This has just gone on too long. Too many people have been affected. Even before the fire started, we already had a 60% cancer incident rate for people living within two miles of site. This community already has a 10 to 20% higher invasive breast cancer rate than the rest of California. Uh, based on our self-reporting of all the cancer families, we found out that we are above the national average in this community for pediatric cancers. We were already hurting. People had thyroid issues. People were having um, autoimmune diseases. I mean, it's been really bad out here for a long time. This was before the fire started. And they, the DTSC kept telling the public, you know, we were panicking. We were too worried because as long as the radiation and all that contamination stayed on site, well, we wouldn't have to worry. It could never get to us. Well, obviously, one little, f well, it wasn't a little fire. One fire, and it's not the first fire they've had on the lab that they didn't tell you about. It was called the um, Spring Fire quite a few years ago. Not quite a few, but you can look it up. This this is the kind of stuff it did get to us. It got to us. We're not really sure how much. We're going to find some independent testing, but we need them to pay for it. I mean, this stuff isn't, it's not something I can pay out of any of our pockets, really. We need, we need government trusted authorities to come in, you know, EPA, federal EPA that will share all the data and not be associated with the DTSC in any way, not be any way associated with the DOE. And we need it to be completely transparent. So uh, take a second, go tweet at Newsom. You want all the data. I think that's the hashtag we're using. And um, and then we're also going to tweet them, clean up, this, clean up the Santa Susana field lab. We don't want this to ever happen ever again. This is not something our community should have to worry about. I've gone too long. Thank you very much for sticking around with me. I hope that helps. If you have more questions you want me to answer, put them in the comments, and I'll do my best to, to compile them and maybe do another Facebook Live. All right, guys, thanks so much.